Tim, you're the principal here at the UTC in Scarborough. This is a, a reasonably new facility, isn't it? It is, yes. We opened in September this year. And most machine shops we go into, there's lots of swarf around and grease and oils on the floor. This is very different. You've got closing machines, Harrison machines and Colchester machines from 600 UK. Why were they your selection? Right, we wanted machines which represented the standard of machine the local companies were using. We wanted our learners, when they've sort of mastered the skills on them, to be able to walk out of the UTC and into a job with one of the local companies and feel totally at home and be able to work to the standards the companies expected. What are those considerations when you look at a machine from your perspective? Is it the build? Is it how it machines, what it makes? What characteristics do you look for? It's a combination. We, we know as we're a government funded organisation, whatever we choose, we have to make sure it's, it's high value for money. We want machines which will last the time, will take sort of regular and heavy use by students, but still perform to the high standards we expect from machines. Now tell me what machines you do have here from 600 UK. I know I mentioned the brands, but maybe the models, okay. the sizes and so forth. Okay, we've got um, sort of Colchester student lathes, two, two, two 500 lathes, because they, with those machines, they will do all the skills which are needed by industry. But by going by the slightly smaller machines, it means we can get more within our workspace. And it's slightly less um, imposing for the students to learn on. And then we've got the three axis uh, closing mills, on top of that, we've got machines like the, uh, the Alpha here, uh, the 1350XS, which is then the next stage up for the CNC machines. And we've got software which goes with it. So in our computer suites upstairs, we can pre-program the machines, bring the programs down, and let the students then see the uh, end result of their programming. I notice you've got saws as well, haven't you? We have, yes. We've got band saws, pillar drills, all from 600 Group. Because again, we wanted machines which have got the quality which will give us the accuracy and the li long life expectancy. And obviously not disappointed so far? No, very pleased with the equipment. Now tell me a little bit the, about the UTC. Um, forgive my ignorance here, but the, these are relatively new kind of foundations, aren't they? They are. They've been going for about five years in this country, but in Austria, the, the HTLs, which is the equivalent, have been going for about 50 years. Uh, in Austria, about 40% of the learners go through a vocational training through HTLs. Uh, at the moment, there are 48 university technical colleges open in, in England, um, various different sort of areas they specialise in, some in medical, uh, some in digital, some in media, but obviously we're here specialising in advanced ICT and engineering. What's the age range for this UTC? We take students at age 14 and again at age 16, so we cover the ages from 14 to 18. So at 14 they come to us, they will do a standard school curriculum, so you normal maths, English, sciences, geography, computer science, graphics, but in addition to that they do three engineering qualifications. They do engineering manufacturing, uh, engineering design and electronics and control systems. When, when I was, at, I, I left school at 16 actually and went straight into an, an apprenticeship, but what we're saying here is at 14 I could have adopted or, or, or could have come here or to a UTC to start that sort of manufacturing learning. Very much so, and then at 16 you can then continue that education on. Our 16-year-olds do the equivalent of four and a half A-levels. They will get the full UCAS points, but either, either the equivalent of two A-levels or three A-levels would be on an engineering technical qualification. I'm a firm believer that when people come out of a, a school, they need, they need to, to walk the walk as well as talk the talk. Um, too many people come out of university who have got the academic skills but haven't got the hand skills to go with that. What I find quite interesting is there's kind of only one road into Scarborough, one road out. Why would you do a UTC here? Actually, the fact there's one road in, one road out actually makes it very important. The locals say we're 42 miles off the side of England. <laughs> Scarborough has an awful lot of high quality engineering. We've got companies like McCain's, Unison Pipe Bending, uh, Plaxton's, um, to name just a few. But in the near future, we will have York Potash uh, starting their, their mine and also Dogger Bank Renewable uh, Wind Farm. Now York Potash is saying they're going to need about a thousand engineers going forwards. We've also got GCHQ uh, with, with their second biggest centre based in Scarborough. They're looking to take about 30 learners from each year to go forwards. So we've, we've got to develop up those skills to, to produce that future workforce. So the UTC was a, a brainchild of the companies in Scarborough. They approached DFE and the Baker Deering Trust for permission to build the UTC and they've been 100% supportive 
uh, in development, they helped us choose these fantastic machines uh, because they wanted those machines which would reflect uh, the skills they need. And what's the uptake of students? How many have you got here since you, since you started? Okay, in, in the first year we have a limited intake number. We're approaching 150 learners. We were a handful of our year 10 target number, which is fantastic because those learners will progress their way through the UTC and we're already recruiting for next year's learners and we've already got over 100 applications for next year because word is spreading what we're doing, both the curriculum, the quality and the, the ethos within the building. And what about the split between male and female? It, it's great to see females in here learning. How many are there? At the moment we're about 20% females. We would like a lot more. There's still this misconception outside that engineering is a, is a dirty, sort of messy industry, which is not the case. If you look at this workshop in here, it's a clean environment, it's not noisy, and, and girls are equally uh, suitable to go into these industries as the lads. And when you look at a year ahead, 2017, how many would you expect to uptake then compared to now, maybe? We will be, my estimate will be around 400 learners uh, next year, and then in, in four years' time, we'll be up to our full target number of 600. Then when you've got all these people, you'll probably need two roads, won't you, in and out? Um, if we can get the A64 dual carriage, that would be great. But we also put on a, a minibus infrastructure, so that we're picking up learners from as far as Whitby down to Driffield and across to Moulton, and we subsidise that minibus service, and that subsidy is helped by the local companies who are keen to bring people to this UTC to become their, and then eventually become their future workforce. Really good, really enjoyed being here. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Natalie, what's your role at the UTC? Um, I'm the Director of Engineering here at the UTC. Okay, and the, the students here, they're, they're all working. Do you get involved in what the training programmes are, what, what they're doing, their, their qualifications, or where, where they're aiming to get to? Yes, exactly. I plan the curriculum for the students and also then deliver parts of the curriculum as well. And did you get involved in the procurement process of the machine tools here, or was that left to somebody else? Um, that was actually the principal that organised the, um, the setting up of the workshop and so on. So it's only since, um, since I was appointed back in April that I've had an opportunity to get involved in that. I um, have helped, helped to make some decisions with some of the um, equipment that we've chosen, opposed to other equipment. But yeah, it's mainly um, Tim that set that up. Um, and what's your backstory when it comes to engineering and your qualifications? Well, I started off with um, a diploma in engineering um, and then decided rather than going into the engineering um, profession at that time because there wasn't a lot of opportunity in the UK, um, I went into teaching. Unfortunately, at that time, you couldn't teach engineering. It was teaching design technology. So I trained as a design technology teacher and did that for a number of years. Um, and then as soon as engineering came as a subject to come back into the curriculum, I introduced it to the school there and I've introduced it to a number of schools since So, because it, I think it really is a, a fantastic subject. And the principal idea behind the UTC is, is hands-on training, isn't it? Yes. Do, do, do you use these machines and have you used them? Oh yes, definitely. I'm hands-on with everything. I want every student as well to have used every machine within the college within the first year here so that the, by the second year they can make more informed decisions about what to use those machines for. But I want to have a go at everything and I am having to go at everything as well and there and there is a there is a split i mean you do have female students here which is great um, are you expecting more as as you know in the next year or two yeah very much so we really want to promote um, women into engineering because it is a, an area which does need promotion um, the female students need to understand that engineering is a subject for them if they're into the sciences it doesn't mean they just go into science engineering is also a great option and you've been here since september since it opened yeah. are you enjoying it Yes, very much so, love it. It's a fantastic environment. The, um, the equipment we've got is brilliant to use and it's just really, everything's so exciting at the moment. So yeah, great. Ryan, you're a student here at this UTC in Scarborough. Why did you choose this route? Well, I've always like, I've liked engineering and stuff, and, you know, working on machines. And I've always liked the idea of like working with metal and stuff. Can I ask how old you are? 17. Okay, so you, you opted to come here rather than stay on further education yeah. elsewhere. Is it mainly because of the practical side that you like? Yeah, yeah, I like being more hands-on than theory-based. And, and, and where do you want to be in, in 10 years' time? Well, Don't say on a beach. Uh, no, hopefully working in like a good place, you know, getting to work on the machines and stuff. Because I know there's lots of opportunities uh, arising in Scarborough with new companies forming and employment, so you, you, you may well uh, get your choice. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I'd like a good job. Good stuff, all right. Thanks, Ryan. Enjoy your day. Right. Cheers. Leah, why did you choose to further your education here at the UTC? Because I, I like more practical work. It's 
with here it's not just computer based it's hands on you've been making parts on this machine today what, what what's the end result what you're trying to achieve here a nice smooth face at the end of my material okay and there's a big focus in the uk about females going into engineering what why are you in engineering what do you like what excites you about engineering i just i like the hands-on base of it it's not it's not a typical woman job it's it's nice to feel unique and i think more people are like and where would you see yourself in a, in, in a decade? What, where, what would you like to be doing? Uh, mechanical engineering, whether that be in a garage or on a plane. Do you, do you have um, family connections in that? Is that something that you've been brought up learning about the mechanics of cars and engineering, or is it purely your own, your own kind of voice? Well, my dad is an engineer himself, as is my granddad, so I've been brought up quite in an engineering-based world. Just and there's nothing better than making a part and having it in your hand when, you, when you've made it, as long as it's not scrap, correct? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you.